In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we celebrate the Feast of St. Catherine of Alexandria, a martyr of the 3rd century uh, in northern uh, Africa. To better celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who gave St. Catherine of Alexandria to your people as a virgin and as an invincible martyr. Grant that through her intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy to spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw in heaven another sign, great and awe-inspiring, seven angels with the seven last plagues, for through them God's fury is accomplished. Then I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. On the sea of glass were standing those who had won the victory over the beast, and its image and the number that signified its name. They were holding God's harps, and they sang the song of Moses, the servant of God, and the song of the Lamb. Great and wonderful are your works. Lord God Almighty, just and true are your ways, O King of the nations. Who will not fear you, Lord, or glorify your name? For you alone are holy. All the nations will come and worship before you, for your righteous acts have been revealed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Mighty God. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Mighty God. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Mighty God. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord Mighty God. Let the sea and what fills it resound, the world and those who dwell in it. Let the rivers clap their hands, the mountains shout with them for joy. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord mighty God. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He will rule the world with justice and the peoples with equity. Great and wonderful are all your works, Lord mighty God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, They will seize and persecute you. They will hand you over to the synagogues and to prisons. And they will have you led before kings and governors because of my name. It will lead you to giving testimony. Remember, you are not to prepare your defense beforehand. For I myself shall give you wisdom in speaking, that all your adversaries will be powerless to resist or refute. You will even be handed over by parents, brothers, relatives, and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will be destroyed. By your perseverance, you will secure your lives. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Um, so we celebrate today the Feast of Catherine of Alexandria. Uh, late 2nd, late 3rd century, early 4th century, a uh, young girl, were, she, she was actually the princess, she was the daughter of the king of Alexandria, high nobility, and so she had great opportunities of great education, particularly in Alexandria, which was a great place, a great center of knowledge in the ancient world. Uh, so she had access to all the great scholars and all the great books, and she devoured them. She became quite brilliant and a scholar. And felt she had surpassed all the other scholars in Alexandria also. Eventually, the suitors came coming, uh, and she thought none of them were worthy of her because they did not match her intelligence, and that if she were to marry, she should marry someone who is beyond her, but above her, uh, who could surpass her. Um, her father was distraught at that. Her mother, hearing this, uh, said, let me introduce you to somebody. Her mother was secretly a Christian during the times of persecution and brings her to kind of her spiritual father, this monk who's living in a cave outside the city and leaves her to him. He is going to listen to her, listen to him. She's going to listen to him talk about the person of Jesus and just this description of who he is. She begins to fall for Jesus and falls in love with Jesus. Eventually he teaches her the, the great spiritual disciplines of, of contemplation, uh, reading of scripture, uh, fasting, and she eventually has a great vision of the person of Jesus and finds herself in union with her, with him. She returns back to royal court, and when she comes back, uh, the emperor has come to Alexandria on a visit. Uh, the city is overwhelmed with uh, games and festivities as would fit the emperor's visit. And this included as well uh, uh, several sacrifices to the gods. Uh, of course, this was a great civic event, and so the expectation that the civic, the polis, would attend this event of the sacrifices to the gods. Christians, however, were resistant and did not partake. The emperor was upset and began killing them, executing them, also putting Christians in the Holocaust fires of the sacrifices. Catherine, saying this isn't right, goes before the emperor and says, you need to stop this. This is utterly, uh, this is abominable. Stop. He's amused uh, by her comments, by her argument there, and says, I'll stop. If you can convince 50 of the greatest scholars uh, of Christianity, I'll stop. So she's placed into a room with these 50 scholars, and they go, they go at it. They go at it philosophically, uh, paganism, Christianity. She's actually able to convert all those scholars to Christianity, and they desire baptism. The emperor is upset and has all of those uh, uh, executed, all those scholars. Um, eventually, the emperor has to take care of some business outside of the city, city of Alexandria, and Catherine is put into prison. The emperor's wife is fascinated by this girl, and so comes down into the dungeon with her retinue to listen to her and see what's going on. That was a fatal mistake, because the empress, she becomes, again, a Christian after hearing her argument, after hearing her, her witness, and not just her, but her retinue as well. When the emperor comes back and finds this out, she go, he goes and has her killed, uh, along with her retinue, and says, you can't do that, and she's dead. Now he's without a wife, and he figures, why not Catherine? So he invites Catherine, why don't you marry me? Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an emperor. Uh, but Catherine ultimately says, no, I, I'm with Jesus. And he's my husband, ultimately, and so I will not marry you. I betrothed my complete self, my entire person, to Jesus. Um, the emperor is fed up and says, now time for your martyrdom. Um, they have this torture device of this breaking wheel. I do not know what this is, but it's a giant wheel, wheel that a person could fit on. And they're going to put her onto that to torture her before she dies. Um, as soon as she touches it, it breaks. Uh, and so everyone is like overwhelmed by this. And like, we don't want to do this. We don't want to execute her. We don't want to kill her. Um, the, uh, the guards who are near and who are going to take care of this executioner, seeing that happen, they, they profess Christianity right there. The emperor's upset, has that group killed. 
Um, the emperor finally decides, I will kill her myself, and does, and slices off her head, and she's dead, and she's buried. Uh, I think she's, I think her burial spot is in Sinai, actually, uh, uh, the monastery, the Christian monastery near Mount Sinai. Uh, in today's gospel, Jesus is really clear. Uh, you're going to be brought before magistrates and governors and kings, and you're going to have to give testimony. Catherine seemed like she did pretty good uh, with whatever testimony she was give, being given by the Holy Spirit to guide her in this. I don't know that we would fare so well. Um, I think our gospel, the ultimate lesson of the gospel is, don't worry, uh, you'll be okay. I'll take care of it. The voice of Jesus saying, I'll take care of it. And so our gospel is asking us simply to say, how much more, how much more can we fall into a real trust of the person of Jesus? When adversary comes, when difficulties come, when stress comes, when a pandemic comes, how can we rely, how can we not rely on our own strengths, but rather rely on Jesus and his strength? Uh, our trust in him will get us through everything. Um, that's a very different way of life, thinking, no, I got to take care of myself. Well, no, actually, Jesus wants to take care of you. Let him take care of you and watch what he does with your life. Um, Catherine clearly trusted Jesus. Clearly trusted Jesus and becomes this amazing saint with this amazing story. Um, even Joan of Arc has a vision of, King, of, of Catherine of Alexandria, who kind of gives her wisdom and knowledge and counsel. Uh, because this girl had trusted Jesus, this great person in her life. And so how can we trust Jesus? How can we rely on him? Let's stand now and bring our prayers, our petitions before our loving God. Uh, let us pray for the church around the world, that she might be a sign of unity and peace for all peoples. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, let us pray for all our governmental officials and leaders of our, our county, our state, our city. Uh, we pray for the leaders of our school, uh, that the Lord may continue to bless them with good counsel to guide us during this time of pandemic. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Uh, we pray for the grace of being able to trust Jesus more. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for what else shall we pray for? Let's pray for all those traveling today um, to be with loved ones for Thanksgiving, that God might grant them uh, safety. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Today's my nephew's birthday, and I just like to pray for young people like him. Um, for blessings on them and their own growth into wisdom, knowledge, and grace, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Let's just pray for all of our families. Uh, tomorrow's a, a big family day, so even though we're not with them, just pray that we might all grow in greater love and faith. For this we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <clears throat> Let's for pray. All those, go ahead. For all those who suffer from um, any kind of illness, those we've been asked to pray for, and for all those especially who suffer from COVID and those who minister to them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Let's pray for the novices who are finishing up the spiritual exercises. For them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers we hold silently within our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we are confident that you hear us always because you love us, and because we ask in the powerful name of your Son, Jesus, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have this wine to offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever.
Pray, my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accepts the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of His holy church. May the offerings we bring in celebration of Blessed Catherine win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr Catherine poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your, prayer, your power, and on the field will bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Samuel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy in us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us all to everlasting life. We invite those who are watching at home to use this time of quiet after communion to make your own spiritual communion, acknowledging your faith in the person of Jesus and your own desire to be one with him. The Lamb who is at the center of the throne will lead them to the springs of water of the springs of the water of life. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who has bestowed on blessed Catherine a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant we pray through the prayer of the, that through the power of this sacrament that bravely overcoming every evil we may attain the glory of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We invite those who are watching at home to join us tomorrow on Thanksgiving for a Thanksgiving Mass. 
Uh, we'll celebrate Mass, uh, for the Mass for Thanksgiving uh, tomorrow, 11, 15 a.m. Uh, we hope you can join us a nice way to begin your Thanksgiving day. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.